I just got done watching Ahsoka episode 8, the finale of season 1, and I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on it. I'm not going to go into too many details like I do for my other reviews, because I am going to have a video coming out very shortly after this one, going over my overall thoughts of the Ahsoka show, where I will go into a lot more detail for each episode. I'm also going to be releasing a super cut of all 8 episode reviews in one giant video for you guys, so if you missed any of the other ones and don't want to take your time clicking through my channel to find them, that video is for you, and both of those will be coming out within the next couple of days. Without further ado, let's get into my thoughts about the finale of Ahsoka. To start off with, I just want to say that this finale was pretty decent overall to me. I wasn't blown away, I wasn't disappointed, I was somewhere in the middle, but more towards the positive side of it. We got a lot of action, a lot of cool scenes, a lot of good story building elements, but we were also left with a lot of unanswered questions and some other lackluster moments for a finale. Especially a finale on the scale of what is happening in the galaxy in the Ahsoka series. So the main takeaways of this is obviously the splitting up of the characters. The characters quite literally swapped places as Ezra and Thrawn were stuck in the new galaxy, and now they were the only ones to get out and return to the known galaxy, with everybody else being stuck in the new one. I hope you followed along with that. That was a mouthful, but you know what I mean, which is kind of great. Like George Lucas said, it's poetry, it rhymes, but it's also slightly disappointing. I kind of knew this was coming, and I'm curious to see where it goes, but I would have liked to see everybody, maybe minus a few characters, get back to the known galaxy and see it play out from there. But I know we can't really have that. And I think Sabine, Ahsoka, and the antagonists and Shin and Balin being stuck in this new galaxy is going to add a lot of character development throughout season two of Ahsoka if we get it. And once they eventually get back to the known galaxy, their characters are going to be a lot more touted, a lot more respected for this Heir to the Empire movie, which is going to be good and it's going to be a great payoff. But obviously in the moment, I was just kind of in shock and it gave us kind of a the heroes don't always win moment, which has kind of become a trend in a lot of recent media. But this was done pretty tastefully and it was nice to see in a kind of Star Wars style that, hey, the heroes with the lightsabers and the light side of the force are not always going to get what they want. And this was a great example of that. And it kind of shows Thrawn's power and it's going to tout him as more of a threat now that he is in this known galaxy with not a lot of people to stop him, which is exactly what he wanted. Something else that we got to talk about in this episode was the undead stormtroopers and Morgan Elsbeth's demise to the hands of Ahsoka. It's crazy that Elsbeth got the blade of Mother Talzin just conjured up to her by the Night Mothers. This was very bad, I have to say, and got my jaw dropping when I saw them conjure it up, got me a little hyped up, and... Honestly, out of all the speculation I did over the course of pre this series coming out and throughout the course of the series, did not even think about a rematch between Morgan and Ahsoka, and it is definitely the rematch that I didn't know I needed. This fight drug out over several minutes, and I was here for every moment of it. The choreography was top-notch. There was a lot of slow burn moments, as we've seen throughout this series, but also a lot of action-packed choreography with the blade and Ahsoka's two sabers, even one saber after Morgan destroyed her shorter blade. And I don't know, every hit, every lightsaber clash, every duck, every dodge, every beat just hit for me. Sure, there were some parts where it seemed like, yes, that was a little too perfect, but I don't know what you can expect without the OGs like Nick Gillard not working on the choreography. But for what we got and what we have been getting, this was a very well executed fight. And I had to go rewatch it after the episode just because of how flawless I felt it was. And obviously by the ending of it, Ahsoka besting Morgan Elsbeth and killing her, slicing her right down the middle right after she received her shadow powers, which is a little disappointing. I would have liked to see what she could have done with that. But hey, maybe this does not mean the end of Morgan Elsbeth because she has these new powers. We're just going to have to see how that plays out. But the fight and the undead stormtroopers was quite a treat. I personally thought that these stormtroopers were dead already. Uh, that didn't really get answered. Maybe they were, but they were just able to be re 
re-resurrected by the Night Mother's magic? That still has yet to be answered, or maybe it just went right over my head. If you know the answers to this, please let me know in the comments. Another crazy cool takeaway from this episode is that before Thrawn and the Night Mothers are making their arrival in the known galaxy, we are going to see them go to Dathomir so Thrawn can hold up his end of the promise, which is what I can only assume is resurrecting and getting these Night Mothers to Dathomir so they can resurrect their sisters and return to their home. Now, this is very cool and opens up a lot of possibilities as to maybe resurrecting known characters such as Asajj Ventress and maybe even making another Force user resurrected to give to Thrawn as a thanks. Who knows what we will see, but just being able to see a live-action Dathomir and the Night Mother's return home to who knows what we will see is very cool to me. And I like how this also shows that Thrawn is just so cunning and that he is going to hold up his end of the bargain and return the mother's home before he makes his long-awaited presence known in the known galaxy. This also gives another storyline to Ahsoka Season 2 while we wait for Ahsoka, Sabine, and anybody else to try to make their way back to the known galaxy, which is good because we're going to need multiple storylines in this small world. I think that's going to help push the pace of Season 2 and give us a lot more juicy tidbits. Now, those are my three main positives I took away from this episode, other than it overall just being very well-paced and entertaining. I'm going to dive into two negatives that I had, a couple gripes I had that are pretty small with the finale, and one of them being the scene where the stormtroopers are resurrected, and there's this very clunky scene in which we see... Ezra, Sabine, and Ahsoka swinging their sabers, avoiding the shots from the stormtroopers, and something about it just seemed very amateur filmmaker to me, and amateur choreography. We see the three characters kind of just standing dead center, and it seems like the camera is just sort of like sitting on a tripod or just stand still, while we see the characters clunkily move their lightsabers back and forth, up and down, just perfectly blocking these dodges and let me preface this with the characters are not moving their bodies at all they're kind of just moving their arms so they're standing there like robots just dodging these bullets which very small gripe i know i'm sure a lot of people are going to get on me about this but for characters like ahsoka and ezra to just be standing there like deadpan bodied just flipping their sabers and blocking stuff especially like with their power and their physicalities it was just a little odd to see and a little jarring there was even some spots in which they were running up the stairs from stormtroopers as they were being cornered which just felt like the first take was all they did and they called it a day because as they're running they're just like huh like oh looking behind their shoulders and oh throw my saber like oh break this door down like it just seemed very first take and we're done, very just too matter of fact. And I would have liked to see a little more action, a little more passion from the actors in this scene. It kind of took me out of it, unfortunately, but that's just how I look at things from a critic perspective, from a very large super fan perspective. I still enjoyed the scene in its entirety. It did have me kind of on the edge of my seat. I knew none of the characters were probably going to die. But there were a lot of stormtroopers, a lot of undead stormtroopers that were just scary and had this eerie presence. So it did keep me still entertained and still hooked. But the choreography and kind of acting in this short five minute segment did take me out of it a tad. Another gripe, small gripe I do have with this finale episode is all the unanswered questions it left us with. Now, I'm sure we're going to see a season two, but when you spend a whole season not giving a lot of information and kind of leaving it up to speculation and hoping it'll be paid off within the last couple of episodes and having it not is very disappointing. I would have liked to see Balin a little more. I do like how they kept his end mysterious. And of course, rest in peace to Ray Stevenson. They did have his final scene of him standing on the statue of a god, which I think is very fitting and very peaceful end to his character, or at least that actor's time as the character because I am sure we're going to see a recast. There's a lot more to do with this character and I don't think they're going to leave that fully open-ended for the rest of the time. But I wish we could have seen a little more of him in this final episode. All we get is a about 10 to 15 second segment of him walking on this statue and kind of feeling throughout the force that presence he's feeling out in the distance. And that is it. 
We also just see Shin return to camp with these kind of jugglers, territorial beasts, and just raise her lightsaber. I don't know if this means she has been defeated or she's surrendering or just wants to return to the camp. But this was also very open-ended and I don't know how to interpret it. And I'm sure we're going to see more of her character. I personally think she is going to be the Mara Jade of the Disney canon. If you haven't seen my video on that already, it is going to be out right after I drop this video or potentially out already, depending on when you're seeing this video. If you haven't checked it out already, please make sure to check it out as a very detailed in-depth video my biggest video yet very well edited on how i think she is going to turn into the mara jade of this star wars canon and how i think it will eventually turn into the downfall of luke that we see in episode 8 of the sequel trilogy however i digress on that point there is just still a lot of open-ended things regarding shin and balin obviously our main characters in ahsoka and Sabine being stuck in this new galaxy, that is a little less open-ended because I'm sure this is just going to give her an opportunity to train Sabine and maybe feel out Anakin's guidance as we do see him as a force ghost in this new galaxy, which was very cool, very nice ending to the series. But yeah, just a lot of weird open-ended questions that I would have liked to see answered, but I do understand that I am sure they have a season two already planned out and we will get all of these things answered in preference for the end of the empire movie also before i close this out i did forget one positive that i liked that i've been saying throughout all my ahsoka reviews is that the sabine force using finally paid off we see throughout the entire series sabine trying to use the force gain her powers we know she comes from a powerful background but has had very little training and i was going to be very disappointed if she was just able to lift that cup or lift that lightsaber in her fight against shin it was going to be a little too convenient, it wasn't going to be earned, but finally she uses the Force in Episode 8, the very end, the finale of this season, and it comes in a time of dire need, and it also comes after Ahsoka saying that she fully trusts her and will be there just like her master was for her, and that she needs to trust in the Force, live to the Force, breathe to the Force, and feel it for herself. And we see her do this and take Ahsoka's words. In a time of need, she was about to be killed by this sort of Dark Trooper-esque villain. And she finally gets the lightsaber budging and pulls it towards her. And also later we see her push and almost fail getting Ezra to the ship and getting him home which was out of an act of love and compassion for Ezra, her good friend. So although her Force abilities were very quick to be learned, it was very well earned and paid off very well, which is very good, very good character development for Sabine. Obviously, she wasn't throwing people around like Ezra was. She hasn't truly unlocked all of her Force abilities, which still leaves a good open-ended question for how are we going to see her train with Ahsoka in the future? Will she reach her full potential? Will she not? But as of now, she is a somewhat decent force using Jedi-esque Mandalorian woman, which is very cool to see. So closing out this review of the Ahsoka finale, like I said, I was very in the middle, but more so positive about this episode. The more I watched it, I watched it about two to three times after my initial viewing, the more I like it. It makes a lot of sense. It's a very Empire Strikes Back-esque ending and leaves a lot open for good interpretation. I wasn't disappointed by the lack of answers we did or didn't receive. And I think this is going to set up either a Mando Season 4 or Ahsoka Season 2 very well before we get that Air of the Empire movie. And I'm very much looking forward to it. This season of Ahsoka made me very hopeful for the future of Star Wars and where we're going in this post-Return of the Jedi era before we get to Air of the Empire, before we get to the sequel trilogy. And I think we are only going to go up from here if it stays at the helm of Dave Filoni as he gains more experience in directing and writing, having help from others along the way. I'm going to give this finale episode a solid 8 out of 10, but I want to stop talking and hear what you guys have to say about this. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below and leave a like on the video while you're at it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more Star Wars content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.